Hey, hey everyone, I am S2, or more appropriately Syntax2, and welcome to some RimWorld! This is a game that I have been meaning to try for a while to record. I have been playing it by myself, and I've been having such a great time with it. it it's a nice little uh, colony management game where you, like, a bunch of guys get um, crash on a planet, and you, you know, you build stuff, you um, get some materials, and you try to survive bandit raids and all kinds of stuff like that it's it's um it's very nice it's in uh it recently a few weeks ago released alpha 8 which added a lot of cool stuff to the game so i figured hey now is as good a time as any so i generated a little world here and we'll have to pick a nice little starter zone i was thinking something temperate i'm still very much a beginner at this and i don't quite know what i'm doing so i figure hmm Maybe some hills, but not um, mountains. We'll want to look at a good growing period. You'll want to have a few months to grow food, so you can store up for winter. But I also know you can create, um, you know, hydroponic farms and such, but that is not something you, hmm, you'll have time to do before winter, I don't think. So, yes. How about here? I mean, uh, the average temperature is 5.9 Celsius. Uh, winter gets kind of cold, uh, summer doesn't get too hot. So we won't have to worry too much about heat strokes and such. It's got marble, slate, and limestone. Uh, April to September growing. Um, it's fairly high up. And it's hills, so we'll have the ability to maybe build inside um, mountains and such. Of course, I just kind of messed up because that was the generation. So first we have to pick this. We'll pick a storyteller. And these storytellers are kind of um, difficulty settings, I suppose. Here's like a um, standard one, which uh, makes it progressively more difficult during your uh, playtime. And then you've got um, the kind of casual base building AI, which uh, or storyteller, which will uh, go easy on you and uh, give you plenty of time to build up. And then you have the random one, which will basically just uh, maybe fuck you up, or maybe it'll <laughs> be very nice to you. It's uh, It's always exciting. I'm going to go for the classic one, which is steadily increasing curve of challenge and tension. That sounds pretty good to me. Now I'm thinking, uh, casual or rough? Uh, you know what? I think we'll go for rough. And uh, we'll give that a shot. Our world mm, is called Vega Biham? Vega Biham? Very, <laughs> very strange. Name for a planet, but why not? Alright, now we get to pick where we are. And I think we settled on going into this little temperate patch right here. Um, yes, Marble Slate Limestone. Yeah, this looks about right. And then you've got a whole bunch of advanced options too, for if you want to make a bigger map size, uh, what month you start in, and, well, that is about it here, I think. We're going to go with the defaults for now, and just kind of get going. Alright, so, the game randomly generates a few characters for you that you get to, um, you can re-randomize them, but I like to keep them as they are, because it gives you a, um, you know, a little bit more of a realistic feel to it all. So, we've got Vance McClure, who has, um, he's not very good at construction or mining. In fact, he cannot do dumb labor or cleaning, which means he won't haul things, he won't, um, I think, I think, uh, I think it's hauling. Let's have a look. Yeah, cleaning, hauling, plant cutting is something he will not do. But he does have a lot of cooking and medicine, which is pretty good for us. And he, he is a hard worker, which means his global working speed is 15% better. And he is capable of researching. He's mediocre at shooting in melee, which are very useful skills. You, we will get attacked. <laughs> We've got Hippo. Flo Hippo Hughes, the miner. Wow. <laughs> what a nickname. She is not incapable of anything. But she is a slowpoke, so she moves slowly, but she's still a hard worker, so that'll make up for it, I'm sure. She was a sickly child, which is a bummer, because she gets a minus in melee and social, but she is very good at medicine. And mining, my god, 10 mining, 8 medicine. And she's got, I am, um, basically what this little flame means is uh, one, is it one? Yeah, one little flame means they're interested, which means they learn at one times the speed. Regular ones only learns at 0 0.3 times the speed. And, or, percent, anyway, and if they have a burning passion, they learn at 1.5 times the speed. So you'll want to look out for that. 
Now this one has an interest for growing, research, mining, cooking, medicine, and artistic. That's fantastic. That means that this is a very good all-around character that is not incapable of anything, except perhaps <laughs> she is not quite that good at social interaction, but it shouldn't be too bad. Oh my. Alright, so here we have a um, an assassin of sort, which means that he won't be doing any growing, cooking, medicine, or artistic ever, like at all. He has absolutely no skill in that. In fact, he is incapable of it. But, it means that he is one beast of a fighter. He's got shooting 11 and interested in it, and he's got melee 7 and a burning passion for it. That is um, quite good. And he's also got passion, a burning passion for crafting and construction. This guy will be very, very useful for us once the pirates start coming around. It looks like all three of them are hard workers, which is great as well. And the ages are fairly low, 36, 45, and 19, respectively. Wow. So, we've got a nice map layout here. With some mountains, some small buildings. You've got, um... Like, you've got these small buildings, too, which has cryosleep caskets. I once made the mistake of opening those. That is not a good idea. There is danger inside. Now, what we want to look out for is a good place to start our base. Like, let's speed up the time just see where we land. All right. So we landed right here. In fact, let's see. There we go. So we landed right here. Nice, nice, <laughs> nice mohawk on our, uh, our, on our chef. Whoa, really? All right. So, and we, you start with some materials around, but we'll have a look at that in a minute. Let's have a look and see where we could build a base. I mean, I'm thinking already right here in the middle. Because you got some nice mountain, which provides uh, natural protection, and you can build some buildings inside that could be uh, useful, like um, having refrigeration and such inside is very good. There's not enough uh, mountain to actually build a complete base inside, but that's that's perfectly fine. Now, as I was saying, what you want to look out for is, uh, of course, the various materials like these, which are compacted steel, and... Yeah, silver and gold and some other various materials that you will um, use for building and trading and such. But what you also want to look out for are these steam gazers. They will provide you with um, um, with heat. And heat transfers into energy and becomes electricity. Geothermal energy, of course. And we have two of them right next to each other, right here, which is probably the best start I've ever seen as far as that goes. And we have a lot of minerals over here, lots of compacted steel and um, compacted plasteel, which will be very useful later on. All right, well, this seems like a pretty good start. I'm going to unforbid some of these items so that our colonists will interact with them. In this case, pick them up, of course. Um, got a bunch of silver. And, of course, we've got these packaged survival meals, which will be essential early on, because uh, as well as the steel. But, yes, the meals are essential. The first thing we have to figure out is... Um, food and getting reliable food sources because otherwise we will starve and that would not be very fantastic for us now would it okay now let's um, forbid those all right so what i'm thinking is um where is our assassin guy or our merc there you were really good at shooting yes so i'll give you the lee enfield rifle who is the second best at shooting or are they about the same they are the same no one has an edge. They're both 3-3, three, three, I believe. Or is she 1? Didn't someone have 1 in melee? No, maybe not. Alright, so why don't you take the pistol, Hippo, and McClure will get the knife. It seems to me that you always start with a pistol, a rifle, and a knife. And um, at least I have not seen any other uh, starting combo. So, you've got this little overview here where you can decide the different jobs that the different people will be doing. Uh, most of the time, you don't have to touch this too much, but one thing I like to do is make sure everyone's mining and constructing, or everyone who can, at any rate, as well as growing. Because it is important to grow things, to make the food, and it's also important to construct and mine, of course, to get uh, the resources to make yourself shelter and such. And, of course, we need one hunter, which, of course, will be our merc, because he has the rifle, and he is also the one that's good at shooting. All right, this seems good for now. You can also click manual priorities and you can kind of change the priorities around if you want them to be highly prior prioritized in different uh, characters and such. I have not used that system much myself, but um, it should be, I can imagine it's very useful later on. Now, you don't want to make too 
open of a base, like too spacious. In our case here, I think we may or may not have to do that. Because we'll want to have both this area up here with all the minerals, but we also want to have the steam geysers for the power. So we will want to make maybe like just a comp compound right all around here. And then make a couple of uh, nice defendable entrances to it later on. I think what we want to do to begin with, however, is uh, put out a stockpile. So that our guys have somewhere to put all the um, stuff that they're going to pick up. And we can just start the speed right here. Because so they're going to pick up all this stuff and put it in the stockpile. And we get some nice handy little hints here on the side. It says we need a growing zone, we need colonist beds, and, you know, we should build a room. I, I agree with <laughs> I agree with all those statements. We should probably build some rooms. I'm thinking we're gonna do it in wood since we have a lot of um, since we have a lot of trees around. I think this is mud, which will not make it constructible, which is kind of annoying. Later on, however, we can uh, build a fertilizer, which will make it into dirt, which we can absolutely build on. So, to begin with, I suppose. We should just build a couple of houses around this area. Just so they have somewhere to sleep soon enough. Now, they have to be a certain size for colonists to be happy. I believe it is 6x5. So we're going to do something like this, though. Um, 3, 4, 5, 6. Something to that effect. Oh my, that is not, that is not centered at all. There, something, something like that. And they, they, they like having their own bedrooms. Did I make that the right size? Ah, whatever. It's not that important. As long as they have somewhere to live, as it were. Alright, maybe I do want to just... There. I think that's about right. So let's put on some doors there. And we'll make these nice little houses. We should probably make a growing zone right outside here. Yeah, like that. Maybe just kind of there. A little bit of OCD there, but you know. All right, so we we'll want to chop down some chop, chop down some trees. Get some of that um, good building material, because I do not think we have enough to actually finish all of this. And of course, we'll want to put down some beds. So I'm going to do that right now. I can't even pick wood because we don't have any wood at the moment. Let's speed things up a little. Luckily, you don't have to worry too much early on about pirates, at least not for a few nights. Long enough time to actually get some shelter up, and perhaps even some uh, turrets to defend ourselves with. I'm gonna see. Uh, I can't ch chop those trees down. Is it because they're uh, they're not not fully grown, are they? Hmm. Yeah, it's 25%, I think is what it says. No? Hmm. Where can you see if it's fully grown? Oh, well. There's something to figure out later. I think, even though we have these um, packaged survival meals, we'll want to uh, mark some, like, boars and miscellany animals to be hunted. It won't go bad too early. And we'll have some meat ready for when we need to... Um, for when we need to start cooking. Because I want to kind of skip the... Um, there's a building called the Nutrient Paste dis <laughs> Dispenser. And I want to kind of try to skip that. Especially since we have a an actual chef. I want to skip that and build a cooking stove real early. But first I want to get our shelter done. So that they have somewhere to sleep. Alright, let's see. We should have enough materials to actually build a few wooden beds. Oh, man, I, I really did mess up the dimensions of these um, houses. Um, but I do think they actually do need to be a little bigger if you put other things like a cooking stove inside. Which is what I'm going to do in Mr. McClure's room, because he is the chef. So he's going to be cooking in his room, at least for now, until we can get a an area for that, uh, dedicated for that. Uh, until we can build a kitchen, that is. Now, I think we need to also put up some power. They're, of course, going to go to bed. They haven't slept for, like, two days or something. Because I did not designate any sleeping spots. But um, they're okay, I think. 
if you look at their mood, when they go below a certain threshold, which is uh, referred to as the mental break threshold, they can go berserk or just run off or become catatonic or, oh, well, they can do, well, they break, which is not good. It's, 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 of course, not good. So we're going to build a solar generator to try to get some power going. And I want to build power conduits, like across like that. It should reach the door, but I should also be able to, um, actually, I don't know why I'm, I was thinking maybe if I'm placing something to the left, um, further away later, but honestly, I don't think I will. So I'll just do that for now. And we will need a battery, and batteries need to go indoors, or they will potentially explode uh, if there is rain that falls down upon them. And that's also not a very good idea. Alright, so we've got a couple of things uh, queued up for them here. It should... Um... Yes, that should be good. I think our hunting is done. Did we haul any... Does it store any corpses here? No, it doesn't. We should do that. Just to collect them. So that they're all in the same place for later when we actually do butcher them. Which reminds me, we actually need a butchering table. And I don't know if we can place that in the same room, can we? Should we just place it up there? We should place it up there. That person can butcher and that person can cook. Which also means we should probably switch um, the stockpile zone for actually the stockpile zone for meats can be like here yeah and then we'll just uh, take corpses oh, animal and then we'll disallow everything every other category so only animal corpses and uh, foods there so foods and animal Hmm. Should meals be allowed? Yes. All right. So there we go. We'll do that. And then in this storage, we won't store foods or animal courses. There. That way we have a designated one that's just for food. I think it needs to be bigger, though, if it's going to fit uh, actual food. So let's expand that a little bit. Maybe even... No? Let's, let's see if that's enough. All right. So we got the power, but I don't think... No. Okay, I was mistaken. It was not close enough. So we're going to have to build... Yeah, like that. It'll uh, the door uh, acts as a conduit of sorts, so it'll reach the cooking table that way. All right, let's see how that works. Hmm. Oh wow, Willie, look at that. Yes, so we got power at the cooking stove. So let's uh, put in a bill to cook simple meals and put it on forever. That way we will cook simple meals with whatever materials we can. In this case, it will be potato plants and whatever meats we happen to hunt. We'll also put in a bill to butcher creatures indefinitely so that we make sure we do that as well. So I believe uh, butchering, is that part of hunting or is it part of cooking? Hmm. I guess we'll see depending on who actually decides to do this. Ah, okay, Cook's Butcher 2, which means that I probably shouldn't have put that table in there. However, we can actually make two cooks. If we're going to be butchering two, then Hippo can be the butcher. Yes, ah, that's fantastic. All right, we want to change this bill, of course. That's a good thing I remember that. I want to do it until we have, mm, like, five meals. Because we don't want him, want him to work on making meals uh, when we have surplus meals. That's just silly. And she'll just butcher as long as there are creatures to butcher, and there will only be creatures to butcher if we make creatures uh, tag them for hunting, so we'll be able to control that fairly easily. Alright, so we've got a... yeah, Vaz is actually idle right now. We should probably get some mining going so we can get some steel. There's some nice steel right here from what I can see, so let's put a mining order there. And Vas can go fix that while the other people deal with um, our food situation. Got some nice boar skin out of the butcher in here too, which is fantastic. Uh, McClure goes to help with the mining. Mm -hmm. She's gonna leave the meat right here. Even though there is room in the stockpile, right? 
Did I designate all foods? Yeah, raw foods and meals. Hmm. I wonder why they're not um, sorting that out. A group from Hope's Cave is visiting. Don't know um, who they are. Of course, you can go to the overview. I should have explained this. There are different factions in the world. There's usually one or two pirates, and there's usually a couple of tribes, and there's like one or two um, more civilized societies. In this case, we only have one pirate, which are they're always hostile. Tribes can go either way. Um, I do have somewhat negative relations with this tribe, and this one's outright hostile, so we'll probably get raids from tribes and pirates, and these three will be, they'll be okay. Like, Hope's Cave just visited us. You can, like, click the information tab, and you can get a small little um, thing about it. It's a small community of survivors. These people have lived here for decades. They've lost most of the technology that brought them here, and usually work with simple mechanical tools and structures and defend themselves with high, with advanced gunpowder era weapons. Not inherently aggressive nor weak, they're concerned with practical matters of trade, trust, and survival. So, basically, we can probably trade with these people if we uh, get our relations up with them enough. I don't know if that's actually a possibility this early on in the alpha, um, but I'm pretty sure it's intended to be a, a feature. I'm not uh, an expert at this game by any means, so you'll have to excuse me if I don't know the answer to that. Hmm. Are they not hauling this, or is are they just uh, chilling? It's Hippo's birthday today. She just turned 46. Ha! Huh, fantastic! Happy birthday to you. Hmm. So what is going on here? Alright. Um, I was just uh, kind of perplexed that they're not hauling that stuff away. Is it because there's a bunch of stuff in it? Nope, they're doing it now. Alright. It's just me being impatient. Uh, not a big deal. Alright, so we should probably think about building a wind turbine because while solar power is nice it is a little troublesome on days when there isn't any sun apparently it's still having quiet output even though it's raining so that's pretty good but eh, okay fine I'll just uh, put up a second solar uh, solar generator so I think it's time, soon, to start building defenses. A local squirrel has gone mad. It will attack everyone it sees. I think our visitors here will probably take care of that for us. Which is good. Heh. <laughs> it's being bitten over and over again. Oh, there. They took care of the squirrel. Thank you. He is bleeding in his nose. And head and right and arm and right foot. Wow, what a vicious squirrel that is. Alright, so we have some uh, enough um, energy in our battery stored so that we can uh, start putting down some... Um, there, some lamps in our rooms to get some light going. They'll like that. They've all got a spacious interior. Apparently Hippo is naked. Really? What gear do you have? Oh, she's only wearing pants. Really? What? Where did the shirt go? Don't they start with the shirt? I could have sworn they always get the um, full outfit. We should do something about that. We don't really have any clothes at the moment. And we don't have any way of uh, building clothes either. Well, looks like the food situation is fairly fine. Um, I think we have more food than we can actually keep unspoiled, but um, we should create a uh, refrigeration room sh some point in the future. I think we have to worry too much at this point. Well, it looks like uh, we're off to a pretty good start here, I think. Um, I hope you had as much fun as I do. did. And I will catch you in the next episode. Bye-bye. <laughs>